friends, welcome to my channel. Well, if this is your first time here or you've tuned into some of my other videos, I just wanna say thank you. I'm so happy that you're here. And I am so excited to chat about this topic. It's something that I personally have been dealing with and struggling with for a lot of my life, specifically the past few years. Um, and it's something that is really on my heart to share. I was asked to create this video to specifically talk about how to avoid burnout and some self-care tips of how to deal with that and how to help in that recovery process. So today we're gonna to be talking about three tips, three things that you can incorporate into your everyday routine that will literally change the game for you. They were life-changing for me. I know that they will change the game for you in avoiding burnout and dealing with burnout. And then we're also gonna be talking about some general self-care tips of what you can do to help in the recovery process of burnout, but also help prevent that burnout from ever happening. So let's get started. Burnout is very real and unfortunately it happens way too often when it really should not be happening at all in our everyday lives. We as a society need to stop glamorizing being overworked, underpaid, filling our days with things that don't matter and celebrating this idea of always being busy. You and your self-care is what is most important. You wanna be able to take care of your family, your friends, other people better, prioritize yourself. You wanna have more productive days, practice self-care. We have this misconception that we should feel guilty for taking care of ourselves or that we don't have time because we're already stretched so thin. So let's dive into that. Here are some cold hard facts. Okay, taking care of yourself isn't selfish and you shouldn't feel guilty for it. By prioritizing your self-care and your mental health, you are presenting yourself to those you love, those who you want to serve best as calmer, more level-headed, a better version of yourself. So you are also prioritizing them because you are able to better care and present yourself for those people. Fact, you will be better in all aspects of your life by taking time to prioritize you. Okay, so three steps to incorporate into your everyday routine that will literally change the game for you and change this pattern of work hard, hustle, burnout, fail, <laughs> work hard, hustle, burnout, stop doing everything, okay? So these three steps to incorporate into your everyday routine is one, create a morning routine, two, create an evening routine, and three, set one thing every single week that is just for you, just for yourself. We're gonna go over each of these things and dive into some examples of what this may look like for you. Okay, so first thing is creating a morning routine. Now, before you turn off this video and shut everything down saying, I don't have time for that, um, there's not enough time in the day, I'm not a morning person, all of these excuses, I want you to pause and take a listen. Our brains are the most moldable from the minute that we wake up to about 30 minutes after we initially wake up. So this is a very, very crucial part of your day. In my opinion, it's the most important part of your day. It sets the intention for how the rest of your day is gonna go. Now, I already did an entire video on my morning routine and what has really helped me in that aspect of my life. So I'm gonna link it right here if you're interested in watching that after. I highly recommend it. There's some really great information in there for your overall health, whether that is um, your physical health, spiritual health, mental health, etc. Oftentimes, I think that we make the excuse that we don't have enough time to take time for ourselves, whether that is in the morning, throughout the day, or in the evening. So I want to remind you that your morning routine needs to work for you and how much time you have. It doesn't have to be a long morning routine. It could be something as simple as saying three things that you're grateful for out loud before your feet hit the ground when you're getting out of bed in the morning. That's literally 10 seconds maybe, maybe 30 seconds if you're gonna take some time and actually feel that gratefulness, be appreciative of that gratefulness, 
And of course, when you're throwing that gratefulness out into the universe, the universe is gonna give you more things to be grateful for. So do what you can here. Your morning routine does not have to be an hour long endeavor, okay? But don't tell me you don't have time to create a morning routine if you're hitting your snooze button for 30 minutes or you're scrolling through Instagram or social media for 15 minutes in the morning when you should be getting ready. We all have time for what we want to make time for, right? In life, like in general, we have time for what we want to make time for. So make this a priority. Okay, so step two is creating an evening routine. It is so important to have a time to reflect on your day, recover from your day, and rejuvenate for your day before you're going to bed. It's really important to be able to clear your mind and get everything out from the day. Oftentimes, one of the reasons that we have trouble sleeping is because our minds are racing. And so what can we do to slow our mind down, to clear our mind before we get into bed so we have a good restful sleep? So you really need to find what is rejuvenating for you. And that is gonna be very personal. I'm gonna give you a few examples of what I like and what sounds good to me, but pay attention to what actually feels good to you, what sounds good when you're thinking about it. Does your body relax a little bit more even just thinking about doing these activities? Those are the things to pay attention to because the way to properly practice self-care is to feed your body with what works for your body. So your eating routine might include some things like taking a bath or doing a face mask or cooking a really nice healthy dinner for yourself if, if cooking is relaxing for you. It might include reading or doing some yoga or a meditation. It might include an evening walk or journaling or coloring. So you might notice that I didn't say watching TV to relax after a long day and recover. So something that I feel very passionate about is this topic. So watching TV is not practicing self-care. It's not good for your mental health. Even if you're watching something that is funny or, I don't know, helpful to you, um, you're still having your mind run, 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 okay? And a lot of times we're also like watching TV and doing something else. So watching TV and scrolling Instagram or watching TV and cooking dinner or watching TV and playing with the kids, we are multitasking while we're watching TV. And even if you are sitting down and focusing solely on that TV show, your mind is still running. You're not giving your brain and yourself a time to slow down and to clear your mind of everything else that happened in the day. Now, I'm not saying don't watch TV. If you have time to watch a little bit of TV and then create this evening routine for yourself, go for it. But another option is to forego watching TV for the night and incorporate some of these really healthy self-care tips into your evening routine and see how you feel. See how you sleep, see how you feel the next day, how you're responding to people, see if, uh, what your energy levels are like. I can't tell you exactly what's gonna happen for you, but my thought, my hypothesis is you're gonna have more energy and you're gonna be more clear-headed, you're gonna be a, in a better mental space, and you're gonna feel better. Okay, so step three is to find some time during each and every week to have something just for you. This might be one of those self-care tips that I've already given that you don't have time for in your day-to-day, -day, like taking a nice long bath, like taking a hike, or going to the sauna or tending to your garden, having a nice dinner out with your loved one, or going to the spa. It doesn't have to be something that one, is expensive or costs any money, and it doesn't have to be something that takes a long time. It could just be a little bit more in time invested in you than you do in your everyday. That might be only five more minutes, and that's okay. The important thing here is taking time to stop be quiet and take some time that you have something to look forward to. Create that in your schedule for yourself because you are worth that. The biggest advice, if you've made it this far, I'm gonna drop a little truth bomb on you. The biggest and best advice in avoiding burnout, in creating this environment of your everyday life that allows you to put yourself first is this. Be mindful 
and hold yourself accountable. Oftentimes we fill our days with busyness, with loudness, with noise, with things that don't matter. Take time to be quiet. If that is your self care for the day, you wanna just sit on your couch, drink a nice cup of tea and be quiet for 10 minutes, only 10 minutes. Don't tell me you don't have 10 minutes in your day. Do that. You are gonna see so many benefits from that. We live in this world filled with noise, filled with advertisements telling us that we need more, that we need this new next thing, filled with people telling us that we should be busy all the time, that we could be successful if we just hustle, 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 and never quit. I am telling you that it's okay to quit for a moment, to take time to invest in yourself, and in that you will ultimately find more success and peace, which is definitely the most important thing here. So if you are watching this video still feeling a little bit overwhelmed, like I don't have the time to invest in myself like you're suggesting, Hannah, then I want you to look at your day. Look at how many times you're hitting the snooze button before you get up in the morning. Look at how much time you're spending scrolling through social media or watching TV in the morning before getting ready for your day. Look at how much time you're spending complaining to a coworker when you could be investing that 10 minutes in yourself in the middle of your day. Look at how you're spending your after work time. What are you doing? Before you go to bed at night, what are you filling your mind with right before you go to sleep? Are you filling it with drama from a TV show? Are you filling, filling it with mindlessly scrolling through social media? Are you filling it with the falling in that comparison trap of, oh, this person's life is so much better. I wish that I could just have this and then I'd be happy. What are you telling yourself right before you go to bed? You have time to prioritize yourself and your self care. If you haven't done that yet, hold yourself accountable. Be honest with yourself. What are you doing that's filling your days? Are there things that you could change and tweak and adapt a little bit to create that time for your self-care and your mental health? My last point is so, so important. We often have these misconstructed views of what self-care is. We think sitting down and watching TV or having a glass of wine or taking a bath, but then filling that time with having a conversation, venting and complaining with a coworker or something like that. Doing things that are the opposite of feeding us. Also, sometimes we're practicing some self-care in a good way, but things that just aren't feeding us. For some people, it's not that relaxing or, or giving of energy to take a bath or to cook dinner. For some people, having that time to cook and prep the food is relaxing and gives them life. So find what works for you. And you might have to play around with that a little bit. I've already kind of mentioned this, but pay attention to what feeds your soul, what gives you more energy, how you feel when you think about doing this activity. Does it bring you relaxation and calmness and mental clarity? Or does it just feel like it's another thing that you have to check off your checklist? So what are your favorite self-care activities? I want to know what gives you life, what brings energy and mental clarity into your day. I would love to incorporate some of your ideas into my daily routines. So leave them in the comments below for other people to read as well. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. I am always available to chat. I'll see you next time. Bye.